This is going to be video number four or five for beginners flint knappers. Uh, I've covered up to how to make platforms, uh, angles, 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 angles is one of the most important things about flint knapping. And to me, platforms. And right now, accuracy, accuracy, accuracy. How accurate are you? If you hit too high up on a piece that's real thin, you hit up here by accident, or you hit over here somewhere before your platform's not, not right, it's gonna break in half. So how can you have accuracy if you're a beginner in learning? And it's like I told my son when he was learning to shoot a rifle, I said, I'm gonna tie a can on a rope, put rocks in it, and I'm gonna swing it, and you learn to shoot that swinging can, and you shoot every day. And the more you shoot, the more accurate, the more natural it comes from muscle memory. Well, muscle memory is almost the same thing tied in with flint knapping. Uh, I've seen carpenters, when I work with contractors, back before you had nail guns now, so some of you won't know what I'm talking about, but they would take a 16-penny nail and a hammer and stick it in, and two blows it would be in the two before and not bent. They go on vacation for a couple of weeks, be out of work for a couple of weeks, come back and put it in, wham, and they bend it. Wow, they bend the next one. It takes them a while to get the hang of the accuracy back in the muscle memory. So if you're a learning flint napper, here's the best way I can teach you to how to be accurate. Get you a flat piece of wood, bone, plywood, uh, it don't matter. Anything that's flat with a straight edge, and put it on top of your rock that you're hitting on, place it on top, and place it right up to the very extreme edge. So when you come down, if you hit this here, you're not gonna hurt a thing. But if you miss it and hit just right, look what's gonna happen. You're gonna run that flake down through there. So I think that makes a lot of sense for people at the beginning, especially when you get something kind of thin, because if you hit too high, it's going to be broke. I mean, that's all it is to it. You're going to break it. So now, <clears throat> I'm going to show you something else about this. I'm going to set these platforms up right here just a little bit. And this is going to be a pretty short video. I might go ahead and finish this one out using this method. But uh, once again, I'm going to place... The wood on top, so the wood's on top, you just can't see the edge, and I'm gonna get it close enough to where, it's right where I wanna hit. And then I'm gonna come in here like this, and run the flake off. Run the flake off, run the flake off. You might, could even use, in fact, I know you could, I don't know what it hurt, it might even work better, I'm just sitting here thinking as we're, playing along with this. I've always used a piece of wood or bone, but uh, you could probably use your leather pad, roll a piece of leather up flat, or use your pressure flaker and uh, put it down there like that, right on the right on the top of it. So all you gonna hit, you gonna hit this pressure flaker pad, or you gonna hit your platform, one or the other. If you hit your platform, it's gonna be a perfect strike. You're not gonna break nothing. If you hit your pressure from flaking pad or your piece of bone or, or wood or whatever you got up there, you're not gonna break nothing because you didn't hit the rock, you hit that. So this is a, uh, a no-lose situation right here. So here we come one more time. I'm gonna make it a little closer to the edge. I don't know how much to the edge you can see that. I'm trying to figure out a way to position it or if I come down, that's a little too much, so I'm gonna bring it in a little more like that. And I just barely got just the right amount I wanna hit. I come down and hit it, hit it again. Now, the other thing I'm gonna show you is I've done a video on this, but it wasn't that good. I guess I'll take it off, pull it off of YouTube, but uh, it's using a, a, an anvil. I call it the bone anvil technique, and I've seen other people use a sandwich technique to put a rock on top of a rock, one under, whatever, but uh, I came up with this. I promise I did. I've never seen it before. Somebody else might have been doing it. 
years ago because I knew that if you hold this rock right here and you hit it and your arm's flexible like on a rope, nothing's coming off if it's on a string, maybe just a little bit. But something solid back here that's not giving us absorbing the whole shot. So I got to thinking about it. Lots of times I put on my leg right here, and I've learned how to put enough pressure on them and run that flake across like that. But sometimes I won't work up in the air or, or off of my leg or my leg is slower or things like that. So what I found out, <clears throat> I put a flat piece of bone. Again, it could be wood or plywood or whatever. And I taped it to the inside of my hand. I'm not going to tape it. I'm just going to hold it and show you. But because that barely tapped it, and it went probably 80% of the way across because this here was on the back side and it hit into a hard surface, which doesn't give as easy. My arms still give away, but it still hit the hard surface, so it helped. So this is the bone animal method. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this. And uh, I really ought to tape it to make it faster. Let me see if I got some tape I can tape it with. I should have thought about taping it before I started this video. I don't have to start it over. Here's some electrician tape that might hold it. <clears throat> now we got it going. That didn't take too long. Okay, I'm going to... Just finish this point out. I'm not going to talk too much except what I'm uh, trying to emphasize exactly something different from what I already talked about. Uh, all right, I'm going to hold it right here and press against that and strike and strike. I'm just lightly tapping it right now because I don't want to run across. I just, I just want it to run. Man, I dropped my pants a little tight on. I just want it to run right across here because I'm on this point edge. I'm going to set it right here. Pull in on it. Just barely tap it. And I barely tapped it. And that went from that corner all the way across there. You can tell on the video that I'm not coming back from left field and hitting this. And the lighter you can hit... And the shorter movements you make, the more accurate you are. It's sort of like bunting a baseball. If you're holding your bat and you're barely moving it to bunt, the more likely you are to hit the ball and if you're way back there swinging it. And this is kind of the principle this works on. I got it taped wrong in my hand. I needed it taped up and down. I didn't realize it. I haven't used this in years, but I do have a video on it. But it does help, especially beginners to run long flakes. So watch this. Lightly tapped it, and that plate run about a half an inch. Now watch this one. Lightly tapped it. That one run probably three quarters of an inch. And I'm barely tapping it because I'm right on the point and I don't want to run the flakes all the way across and overshoot and lose some of my width. Now, you hit down to bring your edge up. You hit down to bring it up, hit down to bring it up. And I want to bring this edge up so when I turn it over, it's going to be low. It's up right now. It's going to have me a low edge. All right, I'm going to do something. I'm going to see if I can get this joker to turn in my hand a little more where I can grip it. That's a little better. Get a little better grip on it right there like that. Hitting down. And if the edge is too high, you turn them and hit down the other way. That'll kind of straighten it out. Now, if you isolate a platform, that also helps. You see this platform's isolated. 
But if I got a real bad aim and I miss or I hit too high up on it, I'm still going to break it. But it does help with you with you not hitting the rest of the point. All right, I got the bone anvil. Took two blows on that. I'm going to take three. Just straight the edge up. That went over halfway across. I'm trying to meet in the middle. I have to be real careful using this method because I'm telling you, it run an edge from, from New York to Texas just about it run a flake. If you fall off and hit it, you got you got solid something solid behind your rock. I've had people to send me comments about using the bone anvil method, how much it improved their thinning and their ability to run long plates. Now, I tapped this one a little harder. I'm going to put it back where it come off at. It come off, and I'm going to put my thumb right here about a quarter of an inch from the edge, and that's where it went. A pretty long flake. I just barely... Well, I tapped it a little harder than what I was tapping, but I still wasn't hitting it hard at all. I just got using my bone ammo. <laughs> Sorry about that. All off it. I hit it and didn't have it on there. Light tap again, it's just a little more than what I've been tapping on, but that's where it come off at. It went all the way about a quarter of an inch coming off the side there. And I'm gonna try to run this one lightly. I'm gonna try to run it this way. I won't tap too hard. And I'm not gonna use it right here because I'm just turning the edge up. There we go. Now let's work on the back here, or I should say the base here, making me a platform right now, so I'm not using it. I'm hitting down to bring this edge up. Now we're going to grind it, and we're going to put it just like this on this bone anvil. I'm going to put it on my leg right here, hit. Nice flake. Stick it on it again. Hit. Ooh, another nice flake. And another one. I'm gonna come back, go down, raise it up, do the other side. I'm flip it over. Got the other side turned. Flip. <coughs> This side's thin and flat. This side humpy, so we're gonna go over here, we're gonna fix it. Nice, nice, did a great job. I even cut antlers up into like half inch flat pieces. And glue, didn't glue them, but I taped them on each finger joint, like a piece here, a piece here, and a piece here. And on the inside joints, that way when I bend my fingers around, it would be touching something solid. So right now we're going to come in here, lightly tap, get rid of a, a, a turtle back hump on the other side. That raise this up. That raise this up right in here. Turn it over like this to look at it, make sure everything's looking good. And then I'm gonna grind it. Take the bone anvil, come right in here. Nice one, run it three quarters of the way across. Another one three quarters of the way across. I didn't look at them, but it felt like it when it went on my fingers. Yeah, they did, they went three quarters. A little further than three quarters. I used off on it, but I was getting close to the point so I didn't have to travel as far. I wasn't hitting as hard as I was where it was the widest. Like right here at the end. That's a nice one. Nice one. Another nice 
nice one. Another nice one. Now, I'm going to get rid of this bone anvil. Because you see how to thin it with it. I'm going to go back to using this. And uh, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to come on in here and go down, raise my platforms up, hitting down, raise them up. The best way to do these is pressure flaking them. You just make them doggone perfect pressure flaking them. I hate pressure flaking and I'm always in a hurry. <laughs> If I can't hammer them out right, if I can't do percussion, get my platforms where I want them done, I will pressure flake them. All right, now I'm going to put this piece of wood on here. I'm going to come right here and hit and run it across. We're going to see how fair we can get this thing without breaking it, using this as a guide to... Barely striking the edges on it. Alright, I'm gonna hit down. Bring the edge up. When you hit down like this, it, it pulls this edge up, up towards me. The edge don't go anywhere, to be honest with you. You just take the material off the back that makes it look like it does. And it gives you a platform to strike on that's lower than the center line. But when you say moving the edge, you're not moving it this there. <laughs> just moving the material around it. Okay. Well, that did good. I might be around a few more years. I'm going to tell you something. I can tell you, I'm, I can tell I'm wearing out fast. I don't have the energy or strength and nothing like I used to. Okay, now I'm going to put this right on the very edge. And I'm, I'm hitting the wood if you hear that, which is good. Because I'm not it's keeping me from breaking it because I'm hitting too high up. That did good. That was a good deal. Another one. Another one. Big old massive flakes there. I might break it now because I hit too hard. It was going so good I hit a little too hard and I knocked a massive flake out. I mean a big hollow spot. I don't know if you can see it, but it hinged right in here. All of this right here came out. I mean, a, it went across, did the cone fracture. So it's so thin in the middle right now, even if I hit on the edge, I might break it, but I'm gonna try to thin it here. Then I'm gonna come up here and work towards the middle to see if I can get it without breaking it. That's gonna be interesting if I can. So man, it is so thin right there. Just about to see daylight to it. It's not even a translucent rock. <clears throat> this one's a little, seems like a little flatter. Might get me a little more support. I'm going to try it. I have to say, well, I see a lot of rock over here while I'm hitting over here. I'm changing it. I've got it right on the edge. Because I miss. I'm going to hit that piece of wood. I can't believe it didn't break then. I mean, it is so thin. I 
I'm kind of getting yellow wrist. Kind of getting scared of it. Whoa, I thought I heard it break, but it didn't. Must have hit that wood. I'm not believing this, but I have held this piece together with it being that thin. I don't know if you can tell how thin it is right in there or not, but boy, when it gets in there, it dips down. It just goes way into the middle section. I'm accurate. I don't use this because I can hit where I am because I've been doing this for years and years and years like this. I'm going to tell you something. That one like it is, I'm going to use this. <laughs> I pick it up all the time using it with something real thin. Straighten out. I can pressure flake it now. I'm gonna go ahead and try to move a little more on it. But I'm telling you, I can pressure flake it now. You might even have to pressure flake it hard. And it, it, it's 90 percent out. I got a hump right here. I'm gonna try to build me a platform for. This is one you need to pressure plate because it's got a little like a little hinge in there. And you can get your pressure plate behind and get it out. But I'm gonna, and it saves a lot of width, but I'm gonna go ahead and narrow it. I'm not worry about it. I'm gonna come right in here now. Uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm just building a platform. I'm hitting almost straight out. $64,000 question. Hey, you ladies that like to wear those pants that got cuts in them, I got some I'll say. I'll tell you these for $50 here. I need to add some more cuts to them. And, uh, you're welcome to have them. I'm honest with you. I'm just going to be as honest with you as I can. When I was a kid, we were so poor. And sometimes I had to wear pants for school that had holes in them. Mom didn't have time to sew them up. I literally cried. I didn't want to go to school. I was so embarrassed. And now it's the fashion. <laughs> it's been the fashion for a long time. All right, this is one that's going to hold my breath up. Had the high spot in the center. Took a major flake out to move that high spot. This is a real important learning factor right here. Is using something on top of it where you barely hit the edge. Sticking out a little too much and I broke it off. As soon as I went down to hit it, it, it turned on my finger applying pressure and it shot that way and I broke my point off. That's what I'm talking about. It's a thin and that just goes to show right there that it'll break. And I'm gonna go back and try to redo my point and make sure it's not gonna slip on me. There we go. Okay. Just a third a second of it sticking out is all I want. Woo hoo hoo that did good. I'm gonna grind it, hit it both sides of it now. I 
That one didn't do nothing. I didn't have my platform turned enough, I don't think. I had it too rounded all right. I'm gonna take the pressure plate, or like I say, it make me a perfect platform here because I'm running out of room. It's getting too narrow. Be trying to make one with that uh, percussion. We'll make me a continuous platform on both sides. Okie dokie, let's see what we can do. Go into a smaller billet, if I can find it. Well, don't see it. I don't like that when I see one, but I gotta make me a small one. Uh, this is my small one. I don't use it very often, but see how it's got that ring around and comes up? That's not good. That's where it's wore down so much for me using it. I think I see one here that, yeah, this one's not that bad. So this is what I use now, because as, as these rocks get thinner, you need to go a lot of weight billets using these hollow copper, hollow copper billets. That's a good one come off there. That's a good one there. All right, I hope this helped you out. See, it's getting pretty thin. It's ready to pressure plate now. But without even using that, I like to see how far I can go without using any aid at all and without breaking them. So this is what I like to do, but I have plenty of rocks to practice on. I'm not having to spend a fortune for it. So I can do this. If I was having to buy a rock and pay over $2 a pound for it, $2 a nut, I wouldn't be doing this at all. I'd be putting that piece on it to try to keep from breaking it in every other way I can. But I like to take it like this and see what I can do. Just hitting on it. And I also like to use it indirect when I get it down like this. But to me, it's more of a challenge to thin it hitting on it like this than indirect any day. Uh, this is a very high risk move I'm fixing to do right now. And because I don't care and just playing on video with it. I'm gonna hit this way. It's so thin right in here, you don't wanna hit the end at all like that. But I'm gonna hit this way and make the shot go this way, which you've heard me talk about on other videos. Let's see how much I can thin this, which is working good. <laughs> Worked real good. Now I'm gonna come back this way. Rid of a few other spots right in here.
Got there at that point is I'm hitting on it. Still hitting on that narrow point. I'm trying to make it thinner and narrow. A lot of those were not hitting it. I'll show you what I'm talking about. If you hit a platform usually hard two times and something don't give, don't hit on it no more. You're just messing your rock up, putting a lot of unnecessary shock in it. But I'm hitting like this, even my way up to it, even though I feel like I'm accurate. So when I say a lot of them are not hitting it, they're not. Might sound like it, but they're not. Okay, if you pressure flake the edges off on that and get all these little high spots that go different ways, that's a pretty doggone thin point. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to throw that in my giveaway pile. I make these things and give them away. When people uh, buy a box of chocolate from me and stuff like that, I blank them out like this and throw it in there and give it to them as a surprise. So when I'm have time to play with that's what I'm doing uh, I'm gonna cut it off and say goodbye and I'll finish up the next one tomorrow if it's not raining we'll do five or five hope you enjoyed it and hope it might help you